Okay. Hi, uh, welcome to this uh, webinar about how to settle, uh, introduce donkeys to new donkeys and other animals. Um, you know, this is, it's a massive topic, I have to say, because when you start to take in other animals, um, it's so important that we get this right. Uh, it, it's something over 20 years of, of experience that I've had so many people contact me because the donkey um, that they've put in together has had an accident, that the goat's been seriously injured. And this is the first time we've tried to get this information in one place. If, if you've got uh, a donkey and you're thinking, I'd like to get another donkey. If you're thinking, um, I've got two donkeys and I'm going to get two more donkeys. If you've got donkeys and you're thinking, oh, it would be a glorious vision if I could have some donkeys and my chickens and my goats and my llama and everything living together in perfect harmony. If you're thinking about guardian uh, donkeys and having a, and a guard donkey, if you're thinking about, is a donkey a good companion for a horse? I am going to try and tackle all of those questions within um, this webinar and answer them for you as you go through, as well as setting up some of the principles. So. We're definitely going to be um, having a look at this, why the correct inductions, uh, introductions are so well, uh, what can go wrong, other donkeys, donkeys and horses as companions, good or bad, let's check that out. And um, we're also going to have a look at other uh, livestock and just a little tiny bit on guard donkeys. I'm, I'm going to do a separate video and put that out there as well on that particular topic because I think it's so important. And if you've joined this webinar or you're viewing it in the future because you want to know about settling just two donkeys into your environment or, or a donkey into an environment, we did a separate recording on that. Go to the Donkey Sanctuary um, website, look for the webinars um, under the owners uh, page and have a look there. We've got one specifically about settling in. Now, I did want to say this. The point is we made a whole process about settling donkeys in just on their own. When we get other donkeys and we're introducing them to our new donkeys that already exist, what tends to happen is we forget the bit about settling them in. When you've just got two new donkeys, they come, we've got all the time, we've got space, we, do it. we get another donkey, we go, oh, here you go, and you go with your friends. And we forget that new donkey has maybe had a long journey, is tired, needs to settle in. So the same rules apply before we do anything else with the settling in or mixing them with other animals or our own donkey. So if you really want to know about that individual, you know, settling your donkeys in for the first 48 hours or so, the first process of making that work, look out for that other uh, webinar. Um, why is it so important? Because as I've said, I've had so many letters, so many emails, so many phone calls. Um, I've introduced my donkeys and they've attacked each other and I've had to separate them. What do I do now? Uh, we've had emails from my donkeys room with the goats. They've been absolutely fine for the last 18 months. They've suddenly changed. Something's happened and, and they've actually attacked the goat really seriously. You know, we've had day old calves that have been killed by donkeys. We've had um, donkeys that have fought, have got serious vet spills. It's just endless as to why this settling in period is so important. But more than that, it's about getting to know your donkeys. It's about creating your environment they want to be in. It's about setting them up for success for the rest of their lives so that you can enjoy them, that they can be confident and, and comfortable. And, and that's where we're going. This is why it's so important. So often people have the vision. They have the, let's get a new donkey. Let's, let's mix it with other animals. Let's mix it with our donkeys. And it's, and it's a joy for us. And we forget to look at it from the donkey's point of view. And we forget to consider does the donkey have any say in this and what's right for them or what's right for the goat or or the chicken or whatever else might be involved so that's why it's so important because we want to set this up the one thing i would say everybody goes why does it go wrong most commonly it's because people rush now i don't think people mean to rush but donkeys make us very complacent because they're good natured, they're friendly, they're sociable, and so it'll be fine. And I've no doubt that some people will be thinking when they watch this recording, or you're thinking there now, Ben, but I just got two donkeys, I put them in with my friends and they were fine. That They've got donkey friends, there was never an issue. I've had donkeys in with my goats for the last five years, it's been fine. That will happen, definitely. 
But like I've said, there's lots of cases where that hasn't happened. So for me, it's why would you take the risk? We can't predict which donkeys are going to go which way. Taking a bit more time, setting it up to succeed is important. And I'll take, talk, take you through a sort of a step-by-step -step process as we progress. Now, to understand why it might be an issue, why some of those things, very briefly, I'm going to talk about the true nature of donkeys, literally, just briefly, because there's loads of webinars on this. You can go and dig into it deeper. But as I've mentioned previously, the Asiatic asses, you, they tend to have the similar social organization to the horses in that they have stallions, family groups. They tend to be a little bit more transient. They'll, they'll break up in the breeding season, but they come together in, in big groups um, during the non-breeding season. Very social. It's not territorial. Very much about group living, communication in that group for survival. The donkey's ancestors for our domesticated donkey are our African wild asses, uh, the Somali ass, the Nubian wild ass. And because of the arid conditions, because of the lack of water, there's a different social behavior here. So it's this type two social organization. And what we see is that creates territorial behavior. Mares live on their own, uh, maybe with last year's offspring stallions to get the best breeding opportunities tend to hold territories often around watering holes mares come in the stallion can protect the mare from being harassed and hopefully gain breeding rights so it increases the stallion's opportunity to breed now this territorial behavior seems to have rolled over into the donkey's uh, behavior even over thousands of years they still have this tendency towards the, stero um, the territorial behavior as well as the stoic behavior that's required of holding territories and for fighting the lack of uh, or reduced body language all of those things come from this change in behavior and that is why donkeys are so different in many respects to our horses and why we need to be so careful about our introductions because it really is the key, whether it's a, a donkey being territorial in Africa or a donkey in our paddock in, in the UK, um, there's still the potential for them to be territorial. And we need to understand that as the key to everything we do with success. That's why it's also an issue for other animals. That's why we get to tell you some of those uh, horrific tales of, of animals being attacked by donkeys. It's the, the darker side of their nature, but it is normal behavior so aggression is functional I want you to think about this so often when an owner contacts me because their donkey has attacked a, a, a member of the livestock family whether it's that another we tend to label them we tend to feel very angry towards that uh, donkey but actually it's their normal behavior you know aggression contributes to the animal survival to its reproductive success it's there for a reason and if we're talking about competition that successful competition allows the animal to survive uh, breed better it's more um, advantageous uh, to gain access to valuable resources so it's normal behavior more than that we can also think of it as as being protective aggression so tend to think just lump everything in together but there are different reasons for a donkey to be uh, aggressive um sudden pain it might kick out or bite if, if you touch it and it hurts if it's attacked by another donkey it's going to be have to be protect protective if you've got a, a predator it might stop the attack or drive off or injure the predator so it's very much about saving life um, if they're scared of something and there's a lot of fear they may either use their attack or avoidance behavior which is your fight or flight and this individual distance intrusion. So, you know, as a donkey, that environmental space, when that's crowded, you bring other animals into it or people, that can cause an issue and for the animal to be protective and, and aggressive in that way. Or if you're trying to get into the animal's body space, touching them, they may become aggressive. It's really functional. It's there for a reason. It is, we can't blame the animal for their normal and natural behavior. We have to take responsibility for understanding that's their true nature and then creating the environment and situation that prevents them needing to do this protective aggression 
um, and that sort of behavior. So it's very much our responsibility because it's so sad to hear somebody who then has had an accident with their donkeys because they've been too much of an introduction too quickly. How do you recover from my donkey is, is horrible, he's naughty, he's bad, he's all of these things that we label him because he's bitten the dog or the goat or the other donkey, rather than realizing that is the potential for all donkeys and we need to set it up so they don't have to, to do that. I do just want to say that the donkey sanctuary asks that our donkeys, so if you're a guardian um, owner, potential guardian owner, are housed and managed separately to other animals. To avoid any additional stress, we advise not to introduce your donkeys to uh, other pets during the first 48 hours with you. And what that means is we want you to keep them separate. Uh, we don't want you to mix them at all. And that we would advise that first 48 hours is that you don't even introduce them over the gates and fences and let them see each other if you possibly can to allow them to settle and relax um, and be in that right space before they begin to take on the process of meeting other animals. I do get that the, what I'm going to be talking about is animals that are kind of well trained that you can generally handle. I do appreciate some of you may be listening to this thinking I've got a donkey and actually I can't touch it. I've saved it from the kill pen. It's come to me because it's, it's unhandleable. And there are certain things I might not be able to do. And you need to adjust and work with that in uh, various ways. Go to the webinars. There's lots of webinars about how to work with the donkey behavior and fix that before you necessarily do the introductions um does that make kind of sense for everybody common knowledge just wanted to bring everybody up to date are we all really relatively happy with that just let me know if you've got any questions on that before i move on to the next stage because it's just important to realize the type of animal one of the reasons mistakes we make is is not understanding the true nature of the animal okay <clears throat> before we before we actually introduce the animal one of the things that we also talk a lot about is is matching so we um have a lot of questions from people i'm thinking of getting another donkey what sort of donkey should i get uh, I've got a five-year-old donkey. Should I get another five-year-old male donkey? I've got a 10-year-old female donkey. Do I get another 10-year-old fe female donkey? Now, we're playing blind date here. One of the elements of being able to get your donkeys to settle well, if you're introducing new donkeys, is to make sure we get the right match if we possibly can. And thinking about that process, often it's done on age and maybe gender. It, it makes... Uh, as challenge the kind of i've got a male donkey so should i get another male donkey or should i get a female donkey uh, i've got a um 10 year old donkey do i get a 10 year old donkey and that's where it kind of st stops but i think we need to really think about in more detail so character and temperament that is the key to me of what we should be starting to look at if you think about your own donkey's temperament are they boisterous? Are they confident? Are they nervous? Are they inquisitive? Um, do they like social interaction with, with humans? You know, what's their character? What's their temperament? And then you're trying to match the temperament of the donkeys that you're getting to that. You know, if you've got a really boisterous five-year-old donkey, you're going to sort of be asking the question, so do I want another boisterous five-year-old donkey so that they can play together? Possibly. Or do I want a slightly quieter donkey that might be calmer for my boisterous five-year-old donkey if i get a, a female donkey who is uh, quite shy and i've got a more confident female donkey that might be a good match if i've got two confident female donkeys they might clash so we start to think about the temperament of the donkeys that we're bringing in more than just age and gender what are the needs of the donkeys that we have you know do they have special diet requirements do we um I have to keep one on on a, a diet because they're overweight what about their exercise you know a young donkey is going to require more exercise and, and enrichment than necessarily an older donkey who might need more rest and have more restrictions so it starts to go yes of course a three-year-old five-year-old five-month-old donkey being put in with 
a 10 year old donkey is probably going to be a bit of an issue because they have different needs, especially as they age. So not just thinking about now, but my two year old gelding that goes in, what's he going to be wanting to do in when he's four, when the female I've put him in with is going to be six or seven, you know, is he going to be harassing her and trying to mate with her every 18 to 21 days? So we need to think much more about the characters of the individuals involved and how that might to go together. Obviously, age and gender are going to play an important part in that. Uh, you may find that what you really need to be doing is talking, if you possibly can, to the um, previous owners so that you can find out, has he ever shown interest in females? Does he play fight a lot? Uh, all of those things. If you're not in that situation, the settling in period and this introduction period I'm going to talk about, it will give you an opportunity to find out some of that information. Finally, think about the handling and the experience that those animals have had. You know, if you've got a nervous donkey that needs huge amounts of work because they haven't had any training and you bring in another one of a similar type because you are a loving, kind person, that's double the amount of work, which could have lots of issues. Um, and make it difficult to succeed. But bring in another donkey who's more confident and likes to be around people that might benefit that nervous donkey. So think carefully about your matching rather than just age, gender. Really try to get this right, because if we get this right, it's going to make it much easier for the rest of the process. Let me pause briefly and talk about donkeys as companions to horses. Wow, this is a, a really common one. And for those of you who are really observant, uh, you'll notice this is a mule. But the point I'm getting to here is I didn't have any necessary pictures of donkeys and horses together. Um, but people will tell me, oh, yes, my donkey's lived very happily with horses. He's absolutely fine. He, he's great. Now, that might be the case. But I just want to give you a little analogy here to think about. If all I ever give you to eat is bread and you eat bread to survive you'll tell me i could presume by looking at you in terms of research my human loves bread because he eats bread and therefore he must love it without any choices without the choice between bread and chocolate i can't tell how much you like bread so people say to me oh yes my donkey lives happily with his donkeys uh, my donkey lives happily with the horses sorry but if if he hasn't got other donkeys to choose from, then maybe he's just living with horses because he has to, because that rather than be on your own, he's going to be with the, with the horses. So just think about that before. It's very easy to say, yeah, or oh, that they get on really well. That may be the case. Cool. But it may not be the case based on the lack of choice. What do we need to consider? Well, there are quite a few things, obviously, um, of their requirements. Behavior. So we know that donkeys are not small horses with big ears. They do behave differently. They're more stoic. Um, they like to do this aggressive play, which you see less of in, in most horses. Um, they have different needs. So you've got the bonding, um, which is their need for friendship and connection. I'll talk about that in a moment. But diet, we often know donkeys require 50 to 75 percent approximately of the food that a horse or pony of the same size needs so therefore if you put your donkey on horse pasture and feed them the same let the donkey have access to the horse hay that's being fed or to um, any additional feeds I we always give him a little bit because he's jealous when the horse gets fed pretty soon you've got an obese donkey that may be having laminitis that may have liver failure all those issues that are are there so the diet how much exercise does our donkey need compared to our horse are there restrictions in the donkey's diet that that aren't in the horses or vice versa so be thinking about those and they often don't match up between donkeys and horses donkeys bond we know that they will bond to other animals the challenge for bonding with horses is if they if you've got a donkey to bot for your as a companion for your horse, they may well do that job really well. In the fact they'll become so bonded, you try and take your horse out for a ride, the donkey will become very stressed, run up and down the, the fence, panic, bray. 
and be very stressed to the point you probably want to put your horse back or your horse will become very bonded to the donkey and then doesn't want to go out for a walk. Now, for what it's worth, I think a lot of horses bond strongly with um, other horses. We just often don't recognize it as a real trait in horses. So he's napping. He's, But actually he's saying, I'd rather be in the field with my friends than be out walking with you. So bonding behavior can lead to some major problems. Longevity, your donkey um, will live hopefully into his 30s, maybe 40s or 50s. Your horse is possibly going to live maybe unfortunately into the 30s if we're really lucky. What's going to happen to the donkey when the horse passes away? What are we going to do for the long-term future of that animal? As I've said, aggressive play, gelding. So many questions come in from, I've got a donkey and he's harassing the horses. Either he's trying to mate them, he's trying to mount them, he's trying to get them to play, he's nipping at them, he's harassing them. It's no fun for anybody. Uh, they have this need, especially young male donkeys seem to have more of it, but it could be female donkeys and it can be older donkeys. And a little note on worming. Uh, things like lung worm, donkeys can live with. I'm not saying they should, but they can live with. They're not doing so much physical exercise and work. Um, with really without showing too many symptoms or problems whereas a horse is going to really struggle with that so keeping up the right worming um, protocols and doing the egg counts and all those sorts of things which we should be doing are really important i guess what i'm coming down to is actually donkeys aren't really great companions for horses and i'm thinking from the donkey's point of view here about them if we give them a choice what we know is most donkeys will prefer the company of their own kind that is of course unless they've been brought up for some reason with horses or they've been brought up with um, another species you sometimes i've come across donkeys that have been brought up with cattle or brought up with um, other livestock and, and they don't really ever show a particular bonding with those uh, donkeys that they have access to so you never say never but generally I think it's something that we should try and avoid. If you're thinking of getting a, a donkey as a companion for a pony, I would strongly suggest that you think again. I just want to cover a little question here. Any advice regarding a mule castrated at seven years of age? Still very dominant. We have tried introducing one or two jennies, but they are scared of him. Yeah, and this really highlights, I've just saved this for here, Amory, because of this sort of aggressive play, this harassment of, of females. Donkeys are more um, sexual in their behavior. They can be, not all donkeys, there are a range, but quite often they will be more geared to that. Now, mules, especially so with the added ability to um, jump over gates and fences to get to females. It's a very high drive um, and they will be very difficult to introduce to other uh, female animals. In this case, the characteristics would probably indicate if you've got a male castrated seven years of age, the questions are, would you find a similar mule that wanted the same things in terms of engagement, maybe play, aggressive play and, and those sorts of things? Or have you got a couple of quieter, larger geldings that can hold their own against uh, such an animal without causing a big battle? But I would suggest right there, certainly at this time, and that's not to say in a couple of years time, Jenny's might be able to go in them. It's probably not the right choice. Uh, for either the, the, the mule or for the Jennings. But as I go through the program, maybe you'll see some ideas and you can certainly give it a try. Um, so I've a little bit of a framework here that I've created called stops just to give you something to uh, think about. Safety, obviously everything we're doing is to create some safety and make sure that we don't have any accidents, which would be really uh, useful. And for that reason, it's getting to know the animals, it's doing the things that I'm gonna show you in a moment. Time, let me talk about time. Most people wanna introduce their animals to each other within the first 24 hours at, at the longest. And 
I would say we're realistically in the program I'm going to show you, we're actually talking about a month. Now, people are always real back, but I've got my donkeys. I want them to get together. I want them to, it's, it's hard work. That's part of what you're buying into when you want to introduce new donkeys into your, your group. We need the first 48 hours to let them settle in just on their own. And then we need the next part of this, which is um, the observation time. Each of the steps I'm going to give you allows you to observe the donkey's behavior so that you can tell whether you can make the next step and whether it's safe to proceed. On top of that, think about this. You get your new donkeys. And if you've got no other animals, no other donkeys, you get to spend a lot of time with them. You focus on them. You build a relationship. If you bring in another donkey or donkeys and you mix them straight into the the existing herd what you do is you lose the opportunity to really get to know those animals as individuals it takes much longer so investing the time in the introductions through this process allows you more time together one-to-one -one, grooming handling training just being with that animal before they become part of the herd that is well worth the investment of a month of time. Now, some animals will go a bit quicker, some may take a little bit longer. Again, people will say, but Ben, I just did it and the weekend and they were fine. Cool, if you, if you got away with it and it worked, great. But I cannot promote to you, the, the take the risk of just putting your donkeys in together. Observation is the key as we work through this process, along with personality. What do the individual donkeys involved? Have we done the character matching? What do the individuals need? as we progress and the process that we go through should encourage them to use all of their senses to get to know each other one of the things that we often say well you know let them meet over a fence or a gate it's so minimal that actual experience of each other it doesn't really provide a huge amount of information about the other animal and you'll see what i'm talking about as we progress i'll just pause there for a moment before we get into the process if you've got any questions, just put them in the chat box or in the Q&A. Um, and I'll just take this one from Claire here. Can you give some advice about whether it's a good idea to introduce a, a five-year-old Jack donkey to two very bonded five-year-old geldings? Jack donkey is currently living with another Jack donkeys. The Jack donkey has a good temperament. That's a brilliant question. We've got no idea. Because what we need to do is observe the animal's behavior. We need to look at and ask some questions about the history you know he's got really good temperament within the environment that he lives currently with the other jacks but then when we mix him in the environment with two geldings that get on very well are they you gonna all go oh no it's fine we'll all meet you and greet you and it'll be lovely or are they gonna go you know what we've already got a friendship and and you're a stranger is he going to become more territorial and more more aggressive that's the risk that we're taking and we're trying to answer that question by going through this process. Potentially, I personally wouldn't keep an entire jack and mix it with other animals. I think it just adds a level of complication that if unless you're planning to breed donkeys for some reason um, isn't necessary. Yes, they can get on. Yes, sometimes they do get on, but there is a risk involved in that. So I guess if it was me, Claire, I'd be saying I'm I'm probably wouldn't recommend. It wouldn't be the top of my list. Oh, yeah, go out. We've got two donkeys. You want another donkey? Go and get another a, a, a jack. Um, get another gelding. Yep, maybe. I probably wouldn't get a female, but it depends on, you, you know, again, the difficulty is you've got two geldings, but we do we know what they're like if there's a female in proximity do they become more starting like are there other females uh, uh, in the property that could issue is there another female horse in the property ask these questions and, and you'll come to a much better answer good okay everybody's still there um let's move on a little bit before you get your donkeys, before you even plan which sort of donkeys you're going to get, before you do the program of settling in, here's some things you need to think about for your environment. You're going to need to spread out any food resources wi widely so that there is no conflict over that. Now, that could be feed troughs. Um, it could be grazing space. It could be track space. Whatever it is and however you feed 
the animal, not only when they're in maybe their paddock space, but when they're inside in their shelter or in their uh, yard, you, you need to add additional water points. You know, one water trough might physically contain enough water, but actually it's a point of access where you can get conflict. So other buckets or another feeders in different areas to avoid conflict. Make sure gates and shelters do not become points of conflict. So can donkeys get out in different ways? If you've got one doorway that they go into, that's great. But does it mean that the others get trapped in or trapped out? Uh, is there a conflict as they try to rush through? Can they be trapped when they're sharing gates or walkways? Uh, very narrow gates. You know, can we open bigger gates? Do we need to put in a bigger gate? Do we need to make the walkway wider? What can we do to ensure that there aren't points of conflicts there? Yeah, make sure there's sufficient space and avoid limiting resources that might call resource guarding. So anything that is you or environmental enrichment or access to certain things that they might consider really important, that could be shade or shelter. There's enough of it to go round without anybody um, have to fight over it. So the general mythology is going to be to go slow and steady and observe the behavior we want to observe the donkey's behavior to know we're ready to take the next step and i've created roughly 16 step process here for you to to look at the first part of settling in for 48 hours that's with the settling in webinar that i've talked about doing nothing other than than recovering from the journey making sure they're hydrated doing some enrichment with them but keep them separate after that, we can do some seeing without touching. So being able to see the other animals, but ideally without being able to touch them. That might require you to put up a bit of uh, additional fence um, so that they're separated. So they can't bite each other over the fence or they don't try and fight through a fence, those sorts of things. Um, and that period, they might go, yeah, that's fine. I'm not really interested. And you can go, okay, that period that session might only last for a few hours or, or into the next day and then you can move into touching over the safe gates and fences you might need that double fence so that they can only just touch so you can get an assessment so if like if you're mixing your geldings with a, with a stallion this is where you definitely want to have that double fence and when you move it in a little bit so that they can just about sniff noses but nobody's going to be really able to grab each other um, because you need to observe how are they going to be when you first get that opportunity to touch uh, maybe then you can groom them alongside uh, each other but in their separate uh, areas now again like i said if, if your donkey is um, unhandled um, and, and you've got a lot of work to do it might not be grooming it might just be standing next to in that environment but if it, they're well handled donkeys it's just right let's groom you alongside each other but with the fence and everything in the way let's do some enrichment activities in the separate areas so they're moving and there's a little bit of competition for food but they're actually not competing for food because they're in their separate spaces maybe feeding alongside each other that could be some hay or straw it could be moving a feeder it could be um putting some high fiber nuts on the food if you, floor if you haven't done that for an enrichment exercise and then you can transfer the the poo of each donkey into the other's environment so you do a little bit of a swap over because i said this is about senses this is about them being able to really gain access as close as possible to the donkey without being able to injure each other and for you to observe the situation and as we all know donkeys love to smell poo it has a huge amount of information in for each um, equine and so access to those piles of poo in the different paddocks really helpful what we're trying to do here is give the donkeys opportunity to see their new companions in as many different ways as possible whether it's being tied up, whether it's they're playing or sleeping or just grazing or going for a walk or enrichment exercise, the more each donkey can see the other donkeys, the more information they have about those donkeys and what the likely outcome and behavior of those donkeys is. It's just taking that opportunity to really give them up just meeting over a fence is lovely and if you can do nothing else that's a, that's a start but it's very limited because what happens when they get in together they they've got all these unanswered questions that 
potentially bubble over. It'd be lovely if you can get down here into this bottom picture where they're mutually grooming over a fence. That would be fantastic. Um, that'd be cool. If we carry on a bit, allow the donkeys to explore each other's area while continuing to be kept separate. So this is where you shut the donkeys in and you let out the new donkeys into the area and let them go and maybe the vice versa. So this is about smell. It's about the opportunity for new donkeys to explore the area in which they're going to be living. Can you imagine, you know, you turn your donkeys out into an environment with some other donkeys they don't know and an environment they don't know. That's a recipe for running into something, tripping over something, crashing through something. Whereas if they've had time to explore for an hour or two, they leave their scent in that field. They maybe roll, they get to smell everything. They've done all the stuff that they need to do for the other donkeys to be able to also do that. So mix them back and forth, keep them separate but be able to swap them over into each area. Cats the donkeys, tie them up, groom alongside each other. Now they're actually in the same space if we can. And this relies obviously you can be able to catch your donkeys and tie them up and groom them. Those are three separate shaping plans. But if you're there, great, do that. If you're not, improvise um, and try and keep them separate, but do your grooming um, in a space that is safe. If you can, consider taking them walk, for a walk together, even if it's just around the field or the boundaries. It gives them an opportunity to see each other in a different way, to be in each other's space, but with some control. Don't do this step too early, because if they decide to fight, you don't want to be on the end of a lead rope. So you need to observe and be pretty sure the donkeys are comfortable. When you're going to introduce them, try to do it on some sort of neutral territory if you can if you don't have that introduce them one at a time is always a good way to do it. instead of going oh, i've got two donkeys let's put them in together with the other two put one of your new donkeys if bonding allows in the field and take one of your existing donkeys the one you probably think is going to be less least confrontational put them in together let them sniff each other let them explore see how they get on take the donkey out put the other one in Swap them round so they're meeting, if at all possible, one at a time, rather than a big crash in a melee where they might all start um, kicking off and, and the issues. This is just about safety. It might only take half an hour where you just introduce them one at a time, put them back in, you stay and watch. These all need to be observed. Here's a really good tip. And if you can't do the other ones, if you can't do the catching, if you can't do the leading, then I would really, really um, suggest you definitely do this one. It's create an electric fence paddock or a paddock inside the main area they will share. So you can put in your donkeys into the environment in which they are going to be living. They can graze, they can sleep, they can roll, they can rest, they can do all things with the other donkeys going around outside them and watching them and being uh, able to observe them without the risk hopefully of having a fight or an injury. If they're really good at that stage, um, then we can say, okay, let's get them to meet. Starting with the donkey you consider least con um, confrontational, as I've said, continue um, observations, allow the donkeys in the same area for like half an hour and then separate them. Don't overdo it. I know it's gonna be tempting to just, oh, they're great, we've done it, they're all together. A lot of pressure builds up. We haven't talked about feed times, done that. Put them in, let them be, great. Increase the uh, time observing your donkeys. Keep them separate at night for three to four days. So even if you're stretching the time during the day, keep them together, um, that's fine, but keep them separate at night when you're not gonna be there. And I would say for safety, if you're not gonna be there because you've gone to work or something, just separate them again during the time you're not there because A, it's stressful for you, but it just runs uh, reduces the risk of um, something going wrong when you're not there to help out. Done all of that, then it's allow this 24 access to unsupervised, um, they can get on with it, but continue to monitor and avoid these pinch points. It seems like, oh my gosh, there's so many steps, there's so much to do there. But I think this gives the best opportunity for the animal to succeed. So Claire's um, added in a little bit here. If the jack donkey was gelled in the autumn, introduced a few months or less later, would that be more likely to be successful? Absolutely. Gale the donkey, put him through this process that I've just done. Um, 
then I think you've got the best opportunity for that to succeed. They get to know each other. You get to work out stuff. You go, mm, actually, yeah, they really don't like being fed uh, alongside each other or they don't like being. And you can work with that and you can begin to build it. Um, okay, uh, Kate's asked, if an orphan donkey was introduced to the herd within 48 hours, have we caused irreparable damage or is there a solution for introductions that may have happened too fast? And if these steps are not been followed, is it, is this a complete redo necessity or any ideas of course of correction? Um, for me, uh, yeah, uh, this is a redo. Let's do it. You can overcome it. Um, the donkey's a different donkey now because it's, it's a bit older. You know, there's lots of issues. You need the observation time, Kate. You need to go back and say, okay, how can we make this comfortable for everybody? How can we get them to get to know each other without the possibility of injury so that they begin to accept each other and settle down? Um, a, a few key things, you know, in this situation for you, Kate, would be about this um, paddock um, area that you created an electric fence area or an area that the foal could spend time in without having access to the others directly. Um, would be one of the keys that would probably come into that um, situation so that and that's going to take a while that's going to be you know probably a week or more of being there being able to observe that behavior before you think well what else can we do and and go in there take more time you know this this donkey foal has hopefully got you know 40 years to go spending an extra couple of weeks getting these introductions right is going to be life-changing for him does that make sense uh kate okay just to say this observation thing you're kind of watching the donkey's behavior for signs of defensiveness aggression fear and you want to proceed to the next sort of step when you're comfortable that both donkeys and both sides are comfortable and relaxed so you're looking to see actually the more they see of each other am i seeing anything that makes me feel worried am i seeing anything that causes me to go you know what well, i'm not sure about this because if it does just take a little bit more time you know why why would we want to rush this because this is really important um stuff to set these animals up to succeed let me talk a little bit about donkeys and other animals. So old MacDonald had a farm, apparently. But there's a really good reason that he kept all the animals separately. See, they didn't tell you that in the nursery rhyme, but that's exactly uh, what he did for very good reason. All of the animals on this slide, they have different needs. You know, if you've got commercial sheep and cows, you're, you're looking for lots of grazing. If you've got pigs, you're you know, looking for wallows and mud and um, their behavior. If you've got goats, you want things for them to climb up on and browse, all those sort of issues. The, the first problem with keeping donkeys with other animals is that actually all these animals have different needs. You're gonna, the, I can imagine the, the dream, the utopia, the vision of I'll have a paddock, I'll have a small holding and I'm going to have some sheep and I'm going to have some ducks and I'm going to have a goat and I'm two llamas and everything's going to be great. However, we have to ask, not only is it, this in the best interest of the donkey, but is it in the best interest of the other animals? You know, are, are donkeys, um, as we've talked about already, you know, we put them in a field with sheep and cows who have got more grass, that donkey is liable to end up obese. Um, it's liable to eat all sorts of foods it shouldn't, um, such as you know mineral licks and supplements that you put out for sheep and cows that aren't suitable for donkeys. You might put out those tubs of um, molasses licks that are popular for cows and sheep. Well, you don't want your donkeys to get access to that. Uh, if you've got goats and you want to put your goats out there with your donkey it sounds great until the goats start being chased by the donkey or the donkey controls access to, to water or to food points um, if your goats have got horns is there a danger to the donkey um, from that situation pigs mixing up the ground which might be great but it also churns up the ground that then makes it muddy for the donkeys that then get skin and feet issues that actually create holes that then maybe go rock hard in the summer and the donkey can break its leg in um 
you've got you know ducks and chickens great but they don't want you don't want your donkeys eating access to the grain that the chickens or the ducks have um, and they become great targets for chasing if you're a bored young gelding as a donkey so we need to provide mental stimulation and then we provide mental stimulation for our donkey all of a sudden our goats are fighting our donkey for the things we've put out for the donkey Llamas are a little bit more independent, apparently. I've got it on a good, uh, good resource. Thanks, Liz. Um, but they don't really want to spend their time with, with donkeys. And so you end up with this paddock of animals that are ideally suited to being separate. They've got different needs. So is it in their best interest, any of them, being kept together? It's far better to have a setup where those animals can be cared for you know, individually as their species needs. Now, if you're gonna have ducks and chickens, they're probably gonna wander into um, the donkey's uh, field. And we need to think about how that might work. But everything's set up against this is actually being a really good idea because they have these different needs. They, they have different things. Do, does your goat really wanna be chased around by a, a donkey or intimidated and pushed off food because that donkey wants to gain access to it and can? um does it want to make a mistake and be kicked by a donkey because it's just encroached into the the food space probably not what about dogs well again people will tell me well my dog's really happy they play together they run round and round the field the donkey chases the dog and like that's a fantastic game until your dog stumbles um, maybe then it won't be a game. Maybe then it'll be a vet's bill or a serious injury because maybe they're being territorial. They're chasing that dog out. And if the dog can keep up and get away, it seems like a great game, but it could be very stressful. Does the dog, is the dog actually harassing the donkeys? Is, is this the right situation? They're not designed to do things. If you really want to keep your dogs and introduce them, then go through the process, the 16 steps that I've just talked about. Spend a month or more getting them used to each other, assessing their behavior, observing their behavior, working together. Why would you take the risk? You hopefully love your dog. Why would you put them in harm's way? So many situations where dogs have been bitten or been injured or kicked or all those um, situations. You might need some fencing just to stop your dog being able to get in the field with the donkeys. That would be the safest thing. So thinking about this, dogs, not always really very suitable. Take them for walks together if you want. Make sure your dogs are well behaved around your donkeys. And in the same way, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but I've put children under any other animals. Only because it, you know, we want our donkeys to come up and love our children, our grandchildren. We come and we're going to cuddle and he's going to rest his head in the, the child's arms and it's going to be fantastic. That might happen. But I also get lots of stories of the donkey that kicked or, or nipped the child and those sorts of things. It is our responsibility to train the donkey so that they're comfortable with children. But it is even more our responsibility to train the children so that they're really good around donkeys. So that they know that if they walk past the back end, there's a risk. So that they have the right expectations about what the animal is comfortable for, what you can do with them, what how you read their body language. There's a training period. There's There's that expectation donkeys we get complacent they're wonderful they're social they're lovely it'll be fine maybe maybe not set it up to succeed both the children and the donkeys deserve that so what i'm saying again here i'm really afraid it, it's not great some donkeys yes you'll tell me live with their goat friend or their chicken and it's all fine but i've had so many stories of just last week from america two donkeys living with goats and a llama in the paddock. Um, all of a sudden, they've attacked the goat. Been together about 18 months. Hormones change, time of year, the age of the donkey, stress, all those sorts of things, medical conditions. All of a sudden, we've got a donkey that's attacked the goat, and now what are we going to do about that? Um, got uh, donkeys coming in that have, that have attacked and killed Dale calves. We are putting the animals, donkeys, in these situations that they don't need to be in. I would say absolutely, just, you know, unless there's a really good reason that you can come up with and you've done the introductions, even then I would say this, if you're going to keep your donkey with other animals, 
do these couple of things. Do the introduction correctly and slowly and observe and work with it. Make sure you've made the environment so there aren't any pinch points and resources are well spread. Finally, create escape routes. So that might be about fencing off the corner of the paddock so that the goats can run underneath or the pig can get underneath. Uh, it might be having some holes in the fence so that the chickens can get out um, or the dog can get out. Um, it might be just about fencing off with some electric fence across the corners or any places where you think the animals may be able to, to trap each other. And it gives them an opportunity to escape from the donkeys if anything does go wrong. And, and Anne-Marie in South Africa there has mentioned that, you know, Jenny that stomped on the ducklings. And that's a pretty sad day both for the ducklings and for the donkey and for our opinion of the donkey. So if you're going to do it, um, try and make sure that you take the introductions and that you set up the environment so it's safe. Finally, I just want to talk about donkeys as guards. Um, it's become more and more popular to think of donkeys as guard animals against foxes, dogs, wolves, um, coyotes, that sort of thing. An increasing number, oh yeah, that's what you want to get. They'll guard the herds of sheep and goats. Now, the truth is they will, but we need to understand why first. Yes, it's their territorial behavior that people talk about, um, but why does it work? Well, it works because the donkey disrupts the predator instinct. So if you're a coyote, you're coming in looking for lambs to steal, you, you've got some eye stalk behavior trying to creep up, you're trying to you know, grab the advantage on, on the sheep. If you have a big brain donkey making lots of noise, running around, or even threatening to run and stamp at you, that completely disrupts that predator mechanism. And you're likely to go elsewhere to find some um, something easier to eat. It's just the natural law. That's how guard, um, you know, guard um, dogs for herds of sheep can go work. A big dog, it's barking, it's making noise, it disrupts that information. And the I'll go somewhere else. I don't need that that hassle. There's easier meals to be had. But bear in mind that the donkey isn't necessarily guarding the sheep or the goats. They're protecting their territory. It's just that the goats or sheep happen to be in the territory. So. We tend to think, oh, yes, they're guarding. They're just guarding a territory. They're guarding themselves. They're protecting themselves from that predator. And that can lead to some issues. So is it the right thing for the donkey? First of all, you know, most guarding donkeys generally are kept on their own, which, which really isn't what we would recommend. We talk about bonding and, and being with their own species, especially if you're going to think about quite often they recommend taking a foal and just keeping it with the, the um, herd species from then on. So it becomes bonded to them. That's not a particularly good thing to be doing to any species to artificially rear it in, in a different species. So it doesn't even recognize its own kind. Um, so that's an issue. Then we put them in fields of, of grass and we put them in fields with cows and sheep, which have got totally different dietary requirements. They're going to eat too much. They're going to get obese. And you see that really commonly with guard animals. Um, they're going to possibly get laminitis. They you know, maybe get liver disease. All of these because they've got far too much food, let alone also the tubs and mineral licks that I've mentioned that might be unsuitable. Have they got access to the sheep food, the cattle food? Are they going to guard that food from the cattle and sheep and stop them actually getting to it and eat it themselves? It's not a pretty picture so far. If you're going to have a guard donkey, then you still need to have its feet trimmed every six to 10 weeks, depending on the individual animal. So you've got to pay for that, or you've got to be trained to be able to do it if you really want to, but it, it needs to happen. You've got to have the vaccinations. You've got to train and handle your donkey. So many donkeys in this situation being kept with cattle. What happens is they're not handled. They're not trained. They're not worked with. And then you end up with this animal that's nervous. It's aggressive. Uh, maybe you have to trap it. You have to sedate it to have its feet done. And then, and then the vet's bill goes up or you don't have its feet done. And then the welfare organizations get involved and go, you haven't trimmed the donkey's feet and they're long. And now we're going to have all of that hassle. So if you're going to keep a guard donkey, you've got to do all the things you have with a friendly pet donkey. All the treatment, all the training, all the handling. It is not a solution just to turn them out in the field and leave them go. If you've got dogs... And you've got donkeys to guard your um, goats and sheep and animals against this lot. It's likely to guard the, them against your pet dog. So that adds to the risk. 
and possibly against children and, and uh, people as well to keep them out. You've got the risk of poisonous plants, other plants in the environment that are fine for other animals to eat, but eating a donkey, eating them, this is ragwort, would cause a serious issue. Do we have shelter? Shelter that the donkeys can get into because their coats require it and they're not as waterproof. But if you've got all the cattle in there, all the sheep went in there, it'd be chaos. All the sheep could be in there and then the donkey could use its territorial nature and suddenly switch and attack the sheep. It's not unheard of at all for guard donkeys to suddenly start biting ears, attacking sheep, chasing them, especially if they're bored, especially if they're young male donkeys. All of these issues. Ultimately, what you can see I'm saying is it's just completely not suitable having a guard donkey. If you really have, if you have a small holding and you're keeping your animals separate, your donkeys will do a good job of making a big fuss. If a crow or a fox or a badger comes on, often people are ringing and say, my donkey is making lots of noise at night. You know, like, how do I stop him? You know, well, he's doing his job. He's been a guard animal. He's braying when a fox or a badger comes across the property. And he may not be able to chase it off, but A, he's going to alert you, B, he's going to alert all the other animals and he's going to disrupt that predator to some degree because all the fuss has been made. So, you know, keep them separate, let them do their job. But I would really recommend that it's not right for the donkey to be a guard animal and for them to, to do that. Can they? Yes. But there are so many implications. There's much more work to it than people think. I, I would urge you to find other solutions. Now, this is about setting your donkey up to succeed. It's about allowing your donkey to have a long, content life. Whether you want to mix it with other donkeys, whether you're thinking maybe I should have a companion for my horse, which I hope I put you off doing, uh, whether it's about having a guard donkey or with your other animals, we're thinking about this from the donkey's point of view. Is it the best thing for them? We might have a dream. We might have that vision of... Well, all these animals living happily together. But the truth is that's not always the case. And it's certainly not the case unless we do some real uh, work and look at that and um, try hard to set up this um, pattern of settling in. I'm going to take a little question here that says, I have a pair of uh, bonded uh, donkeys I rescued last year, three years old. Jenny was pregnant when I got them. Our former Jack has been gelded as of September. She just had a baby five days ago. We were not successful in having them nurse for many reasons. Not just outright rejection. I had the question about reintroduction. If he bonds with his parents, will that be enough? Or should I look for another young donkey eventually as his mate? Um, I think the answer is yes and yes. If you can get them to bond um, successfully, that would be really good and you should do that. But the best partner for a young donkey is another young donkey that they can have similar needs in terms of play, in terms of uh, aggressive uh, um, play, um, enrichment, similar needs, definitely. If you have space and it's something that you can think about, I would personally recommend going down that route, bringing up donkeys in similar age groups like that has always got to be an advantage if at all possible. Um, and, you know, the sooner that can happen, certainly when you're getting into four, five, six months old, ideally, um, that would be a great time to let them play and, and rough house. Not always possible, but when you can do it, um, that would be great. Okay, uh, questions, thoughts, worries, or concerns? Good question. People get very worried when a donkey dies and want to get a companion very quickly. That's what's the best time to introduce a new donkey to a donkey who has lost their companion? And would there be any differences in the way you do this? People often panic and rush the nearest available equine. Absolutely good point. Um, and I think, you know, the donkey sanctuary is has really you know, indicated that we want to be aware of you know, hyperlipemia. Um, we want to allow that donkey to see the deceased partner, to have the best opportunity of surviving um, without getting um, hyperlipemia. But I don't think we should rush into it unless there's a real indication there's a problem. 
um, more human contact, more enrichment, more opportunity for grooming and scratching and, and walks or anything that the donkey finds um, appealing is, is the first start. And uh, I think I would still be recommending uh, a very similar process. It might be condensed a little bit. You might go, you know what, I'm not going to go for a walk and we're not going to do those things, although they take a few minutes to do go through that 16 starter step process um, as best as best as you can. If if your donkey sees another donkey in that environment, the bereaved donkey sees another donkey in their environment, it um, is going to already help them feel more comfortable. But remember that if you've if you've got a bereaved donkey and then you introduce the wrong donkey too quickly and when i say the wrong donkey i mean the wrong character temperament the wrong match you can heighten that stress that your bereaved donkey is already under so trying to find a good match rather than just anything will do um i think is absolutely as you pointed out uh, liz is something that we can balance out a little bit Try hard to find an equine, but find the right equine and introduce them slowly over a very similar step-by-step -step process. And so if, you're, if you've got horses and you're thinking about introducing them, I would do the same process. I, I, I wouldn't make it any different um, than the one I've described for donkeys. Um, mules are the same. Uh, all the same principles are going to apply. And um, I think it's the best way to make sure that horses get on and do it safely as well.